Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started here. So um, this is your final college theme presentation for the fall semester, right? Um, my name is Melissa Miller. I'm the Allied Health Coordinator here at Spoon River College. So I'm in charge of our health information management degree, um, a healthcare career program certificates, and I teach several of the Allied Health courses that we offer. So today I'm going to talk to you about the healthcare industry um, and what it would look like without um, liberal arts in it. Okay. So first we're going to recap, go back to kind of the beginning when Doug Oki talked to us about uh, what this college theme was about. So let's recap what our liberal arts courses are. They're kind of broken down into four categories. You've got communication, which includes your reading and writing and speaking. Um, humanities, so history, art, theater, ethics, religion. Courses in social sciences, um, so your psychology, sociology, economics. And lastly is natural sciences, so biological sciences, chemistry, physics, mathematics, all call it those categories. All right, another refresher. Here's the poster that we've all seen. Where are the liberal arts courses listed on the poster? You can participate. <laughs> Where? In the roots, in the roots of the tree, right? In the bottom of the tree, those are listed all of our liberal arts courses. Okay, so um, if you think about the courses that are offered here at Spoon River College and any degree or certificate that you take away from Spoon River College is going to include some liberal arts courses. And here's a couple of examples, whether you're pursuing a degree within the workforce and career technical education area or a transfer side. We've got health information management associate's degree and nursing associate degree listed here. The green is gonna be your liberal arts courses, right? Both of those curriculum um, include courses like that and the same for transfer side. Uh, secondary education associate's degree and a concentration in business associate's degree, they've got the same type of liberal arts courses within them, right? So obviously, they're there for a reason. They're important, right? So let's look a little bit, talk a little bit about liberal arts courses and what you're getting from liberal arts courses. Um, so as your faculty, as your advisors, as staff here, even as the deans, we don't expect you to master any of the content that's in these courses. We want you to pass. I'm not saying you can't pass. I'm saying we want, we don't have, you don't have to master that content statistics. You don't have to master your speech class. What's important is that we're teaching you to sharpen your ability and to learn what to do with that knowledge that you're getting in that class. We want you to identify problems, assess the context, um, construct conceptual modules and hypotheses. We want you to determine what else you need to solve a problem, what else you need to come to a definitive answer, and that's what you're learning in these courses. So as a society, we're just what clicks away, right, from information. Everybody's got a laptop or an iPad, cell phone, you can get tons of information anytime, and you can get a lot of information about a lot of different subjects. What's important is what you do with that information how you decide that what's relevant, what is true, what are the facts in that, and how you solve problems based on that information that you are looking up, right? So let's think about the skills. What are you gaining from the courses that you're currently taking that are liberal arts courses, okay? Writing skills, right? You're writing papers. Uh, speaking skills, uh, you're taking a speech class, you're learning to stand up in front of others and speak. You are researching and using information and retrieval skills in order to write those papers and do your speeches. You're using creative thinking skills, so thinking outside of the box, analytical and critical thinking skills so that you can solve problems and come to a definitive answer. And you're able to learn to create, to synthesize a new idea from all this, right? So that's a lot of stuff that we want you to learn out of these liberal arts courses. So one more refresher, back to the poster. At the bottom, we just discussed, are the courses. That leads up to the tree, to the branches, to the leaves. What's on the leaves? What's written on the leaves? Anybody? Life skills. Life skills, right. They're personal characteristics. They're personal traits. They are skills that you are learning from the roots of the tree. They grow up and produce these leaves, right? And you are gaining these critical skills. So, 
Let's apply this all to healthcare. Let's think about healthcare for a minute. Everybody can relate to healthcare. Whether you are studying healthcare or not, you've all been to a doctor's office, been for an exam, went to the hospital to visit a family member, or had a test, right? Had an x-ray, had some blood work done. So everybody can relate to healthcare whether you are pursuing that as your degree or not. So in healthcare, we want to think about these skills that we learn in our liberal arts courses, how those apply to the day-to-day -day tasks that people in healthcare do. So writing skills, you've got patient chart notes, electronic health records notes, uh, emails or letters to other physicians, writing prescriptions, uh, blood work and x-ray orders, all of that you've got to be able to have a skill of writing in order to get those things done. Speaking skills. Discussing diagnoses, discussing treatment options with patients, with patients' family members. Um, also, you have to be able to talk to other physicians, right? Peer-to-peer -peer discussions, nurses and staff in order to come to a definitive diagnosis on patients. Um, instructions to prepare for a test. There's some tests where you have to uh, not wear any deodorant or lotion before you take your test. You have to be NPO after midnight, which means no food or drink after midnight. So you have to tell the patient to do that as a healthcare worker, and if you can't speak to them and share that information, then the patient's gonna come and not be able to have the test done. And next is research and information retrieval skills, which is a very important component in healthcare. You have to be able to research symptoms that a patient's having in order to help you determine what tests need to be ordered. Um, if a test comes back positive, then that leads you to believe that you need to do further testing. Um, if you've got something coming back on a patient that you want to look further into, you, you have these research tools that you can do that. Um, looking up common medication. So you know a patient's on a certain medication and you want to know if another medication is going to interact with it. Um, and on the business side, you have to be able to look up diagnosis codes and procedure codes. These codes are the way that the doctor's office talks to the insurance company and gets the bills paid. As a patient, you want your bills paid by your insurance so that you don't have to pay, right? Next is crit creative thinking skills. So there's a lot of creativity in medicine that you wouldn't really think that you would have to be creative, but you do. Um, thinking outside of the box. So we're in a rural area, so rural healthcare is a lot different than urban healthcare, right? In rural healthcare, you have patients that will drive to your office from 30 minutes to 50 minutes away just to see a specific doctor. So you have to get creative when it comes to that patient with a newly diagnosed child with diabetes, and maybe you need to offer them some options for um, looking with local support groups or maybe a specialist that they need to see, but they can't afford to drive all those miles every once a week for those treatment. So you've got to be able to find them something closer. Think outside the box. You have to get to know your patients on a personal level so that you know how much education they have, um, if they have the internet at home. Um, these are important issues because when you say, I want you to look up this website and learn a little bit more about your healthcare condition, you know if they can or not, right? Healthcare is only as good as the people that you're talking to and the information that you're sharing with your patients. Creativity also comes in when you are trying to help them find resources. In a rural healthcare setting, patients are limited income. Uh, they don't have the resources to buy the medications they need, and sometimes healthcare professionals have to help them find those resources, whether that is community resources and local food pantries, local organizations that will help them buy their medicines, or reaching out to pharmaceutical companies, right? So you get creative and let me figure out how I can help you get this medication. And lastly is preparing handouts for patients. Um, you gotta send the information home with the patient so they can share it with their family, with their spouse, and give that information to them so they can learn all they can about their condition. Lastly is analytical and critical thinking skills. So we have to draw conclusions. In healthcare, we have to come to a definitive diagnosis. When you go to the doctor, do you want a diagnosis? Doesn't everybody go to the doctor because they want a diagnosis, they want to know what's wrong. Everybody wants to know what's wrong with me. So we need to draw a conclusion, to troubleshoot, to change medications if there's a problem um, with the medication they're taking, to figure out what additional tests might be needed um, in order to find out something else that's going on with that patient. And then the last thing is able to learn and synthesize new ideas. In healthcare, you work as a team. It's not one person that gets someone better. It is a team of people. It's the people in the lab. It's the physician. It's the lady at the front desk that makes your appointment. It's the medical assistant that takes you back. 
It's the phlebotomist or the nurse that draws your blood and gives you the injection. And it's the people in the lab that are running the test, getting all that information. It's the pharmacy that gives you the medication, right? It's a team, a collaborative effort. And everyone works together to get ideas and synthesize and collaborate. So all of these skills are used in healthcare. Let's think about what healthcare would look like if you didn't have those skills. If you didn't have to take those liberal arts courses um, and you just took just the courses that you needed that had the content that you needed for your specific degree but didn't have to take the extra courses that gave you these critical thinking skills. So we'd have errors, lots of errors. We wouldn't be able to read doctor's notes. They wouldn't have writing skills in order to give you that information. There would be errors in medication and diagnostic orders. The pharmacy would get a prescription that said, Mr. Jones needs to take this pill three times a day for 10 days. But the pharmacist would say, looks like two times a day. I'm just going to give him 20 and go with that. Can't do that, right? You've got to have the good skills to, to communicate and to write this information down. Healthcare professionals would be inadequate at research and inadequate at documenting things. Documentation is what happens in healthcare. That's what you have to have these days. So if you're unable to provide documentation, if you're unable to research common symptoms, um, we're in a world of hurt in our healthcare system, right? That's how cures are found, is research. So then next we've got patients would receive impersonal and low quality care. Has anybody ever been to the doctor and you walked away thinking, did they even know what my name was or who I was? Yeah, exactly. Um, impersonal care doesn't get you far. Would you ever go back to that doctor? No. So being personable with your patients, being able to communicate with them and speak with them, beyond any basic knowledge and smart that you have, if you don't have that ability to speak to your patients, you're giving them a low quality of care, and they're not going to come back to you. So we'd have patients that were upset and dissatisfied and don't come back to your office um, because they're upset with the service that they received. Um, we'd have tons more mistakes, like I just said. More healthcare problems because we can't research and correct the problems that we have. We'd have more deaths. We'd have less cures, less treatment options. Um, to me, this doesn't sound like the healthcare world that I want to be a part of. How about you guys? No. No. All right, so I want to leave you with a couple things uh, to think about. The first one here is education is not the learning of the facts, but the training of the mind to think. Like I said, these liberal arts courses aren't for you to master the content of these courses. And I know you sit in those classes and think, what am I going to do with this? Why does it, what, how does this apply to me? But it does. It's training you to think. It, you're using those skills, and you're going to need those skills later on in life. And lastly, thinking is truly the most important procedure in healthcare. I read an article once that stated that medical students don't need more facts. They don't need more textbooks on clinical things. They need to be taught how to think, how to think under pressure, how to think in front of a patient, how to think in front of a family member, right? They need to be able to relate, and that's what's good about healthcare, is the patient and physician interaction, the physician-physician interaction, talking to professionals, thinking is what is going to make healthcare great in this society. And that's the biggest procedure that you could have. And all these liberal arts courses that you take are going to help you get there. So anybody have any questions on healthcare, on liberal arts? on my outfit. <laughs> All right. I got one more thing. I told you there were two things I was leaving you with. But this is the last thing. We have a new student organization here called HEAL, um, which is Healthcare Enthusiasts and Leaders. It's open to any student, transfer, or career in tech that is interested or even thinking of an inkling that they might want to do something in healthcare. It's a new student association <coughs> that works in conjunction with SIU School of Medicine. We've got a speaker coming, Dr. Bowers. Um, she's a dermatologist, board-certified dermatologist, and she's also an assistant professor at SIU School of Medicine in Springfield. She's fantastic. I heard her speak. She's going to come here on November the 19th down the hall in room E123, 20 minutes, just like this or less, and talk to you about thinking about medicine. All right? All right. That was it. Thank you.